everyone joining, popping on. We'll give a few minutes to, before we get started. Hi, Paul, Minnesota. Uh, can't see everyone. Cheers. Hi, Jessica, Michigan. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just going to mention, too, as you're logging on, and I'll mention it again, um, to just feel free to write, ask questions, and if you have comments about the wine as you are tasting throughout this process, even if I am waiting, I haven't tasted yet, please let us know how you're enjoying the wine. Hello in Arizona and New Jersey. Can you see these okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Denise. <clears throat> Want to get started? Want to get started? Just wait. Okay. Hello again. Welcome back to this Wine Wednesday. She takes away my computer so I don't get distracted. <laughs> um, which happens. Uh, anyways, welcome to Rutherford Hill. Uh, Happy to be here with you again today on Wine Wednesday. Uh, if you joined us this last week, we had this gorgeous weather that we were so happy. We thought we were starting summer, and today we feel like we're back into the winter time. It's gray and drizzly today, so we've moved inside. We're inside what we refer to as our VIP room here at the winery. So um, happy to be with all of you VIPs out there. Um, just want to thank you for joining for joining me uh, on these on these evenings. It's been real joy to look forward to being with all of you um, on Wednesday evening. So thanks again for, for joining me. Um, this is the fifth week um, of our five-week virtual uh, tasting kit that we have been doing together and um, I really, I'm just really happy to be here with you. And uh, we will be doing another uh, three-week tasting uh, kit, virtual tasting, back, and we'll start up in June. So look, look out for that and for announcements on the next tasting. And if you have any requests, again, for that tasting, I know we've, we got a lot of requests from Merlot, more Merlot, and, and some blends. So if there's anything specific, feel free to give your two cents to that. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, um, please make sure you ask questions. We'll do our best to get back get to you um, during this 30 minutes together. And then also as you're tasting the wine, let us know how you're liking it, what you're, what you're tasting, what you're smelling. Um, just give a shout out there and we'll be sure to um, chat about that as well. And um, also wanted to give a special happy birthday woo -woo, to Jeff in Dallas. Uh, happy birthday, ching ching to you. Hope you're having a nice, nice day today and um, happy to be with part of your celebration. And um, moving on to maybe wonder what you had for dinner. Did you have some tomato soup? We had tomato soup as our pairing this evening with our Oakville Merlot. And um, I forgot the tomato soup, but I brought a grilled cheese because I thought grilled cheese goes with tomato soup. So we got some delicious grilled cheese from Oakville Grocer um, in Oakville, just down the street from where uh, we actually get the grapes for this delicious wine. So it's a whole Oakville package this evening here at Rutherford Hill. So with that being said, I think we'll get started. Um, for those of you uh, joining for the first time, I'm Marisa Taylor with Rutherford Hill Winery and we are a Trelato family owned winery since 1996. And if you know Rutherford Hill wine, Winery, often you know us for our Merlot. Uh, we were, we made our first, we bottled our first Merlot in 19, uh, 1975 vintage and um, people often know us for our Merlot. I'm sure you can see it out there in stores near you. And um, folks know us for our Napa Valley Merlot. And today we're gonna to talk about a Merlot um, from Oakville. Um, that part of that Merlot does go into, we have Merlot from Oakville that goes into our Napa Valley Merlot, helps make up that blend. Uh, but today we're gonna to talk about a few barrels that we pulled out to bottle up for our wine club. So that is this one. This is the 2016. It looks like I drank it all day, but I had help. And also, uh, I actually opened this yesterday to taste, to get ready for the tasting. As I've mentioned before, I really appreciate these tastings because it's really great to sit down and revisit 
the wines and the vintages and um, just to see how they're doing, you know, check in on them. So we opened up yesterday. Actually, we opened the 20, oh, I did, I did right, 2014, 15, and 16 yesterday to see how they were doing. And um, yeah, and they're, they're holding up great and they taste even better today. So that says something about the ageability for this wine. So if you have some, you can hold on to it. If not, open it now. It's tasting great. Uh, I know some other folks have talked about buying, if you bought a case when it was released, it's a great way to, to explore it every year to see how it's um, aging and to see how much you enjoy the wine. So this wine is um, from Oakville and it is across the street. The vineyard is across the street from Silver Oak. So if you know that little cab producer, Silver Oak, uh, instead of going left from the winery, you go right six miles from here. I call it, it's our southern neighbor, uh, Oakville. And so it's six miles from the winery. And it is, it's a little bit cooler than Rutherford. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but it is. And I've heard other winemakers in Oakville describe it as Goldilocks. It's not too cold. It's a Goldilocks appellation. It's not too cold, not too hot. It's just right. And um, and I would have to agree. I think it's it's just that little bit of difference from Rutherford. And this uh, vineyard, uh, we started uh, purchasing the fruit in 2014, and it is on from uh, it was a Swanson vineyard across from Silver Oak, as I just mentioned, Silver Oak, and it has a lot of um, alluvial, fluvial soils there, uh, so a lot of um, dense nutrient, a little bit of clay in there as well, but just the spacing of the of the vines, they really compensate. Uh, to have this uh, gorgeous balance and the fruit is just beautiful and uh, and del I, I find it very delicious so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this wine too uh, it's a great balance to some of our other Merlot that we put in um, the Napa Valley Merlot when we're going to blend it's a nice companion is how I look at it um, there's a lot of um, fruit and density um, to this wine um, and it's a nice, when you marry it with the other sources of our Merlot, it just, it just gives it a nice pop and a nice richness to the, to the wine. So this wine in particular, I'm looking at my notes today, you're catching me cheating here. I'm a, it is 100% from Oakville, from that vineyard. It is 93% Merlot. And then actually that one vintage in 2016, we purchased a little bit of their Petit Verdot. So uh, super fun. And uh, we blended them together. So 7% is the Petit Verdot. I believe we talked about that a little bit last week and about it being a little bit of a later ripening varietal. And um, I think it just really adds this really great complexity to the wine. And, um, and as, as I say, I use the word fun. I think it's just fun. <laughs> it's just a great blender. And the wine um, really speaks for itself. I, I hope you feel that way too. Um, going to talk a little bit about the other vintages. So I don't know what y'all are drinking tonight. If you have the 16 and you're joining me with the virtual pack or maybe you have another Rutherford Hill wine, great. Um, or another vintage of Oakville, that's great too. Um, they're, they're all tasting really, really wonderful. If you have the 2014, uh, super, super special first vintage as I mentioned, and it is, um, it's got a nice, uh, richness. I think it's similar for me uh, at, from the 16, a little bit round, real round, and um, you can taste the age on it, but it's just really holding up lovely. And I hope you're enjoying it if you're out there. I'm going to do a little quick shout out to my family. I know you're watching. Uh, Cox family up in Applegate. I hope you're enjoying the wine. Ching -ching. Thanks for the support. And um, the 15 as well. The 15, um, you know, I think everybody has different favorite vintages, and the 15 was really warm and a short, um, short uh, crop load that year. Um, but it's just, it's got a different essence than the 14. Uh, I called it dried strawberries for me that I got more in that vintage, uh, but yeah, just really good too. It, it's that, it still shows the essence of that vineyard and then you get, the, it carries through to here, to the 16. Um, yeah. One question from Brian. Do you know how many acres of Merlot are planted in Oakville that Rutherford Hill uses? Hmm. I believe that particular vineyard is around 100 acres. Uh, we don't get all the fruit. Uh, so we get about, I think that vintage we got about 100 tons. So, and um, 
we tend to get around 70, 80 tons from that vineyard. That vineyard. So I think that vineyard is about 100 acres. But they have, a, they're not all Merlot. So there's a, a variety of different varietals <laughs> at that vineyard. So yeah. So it, we'll get to tasting. I know I don't. I forget to talk about the tasting a little bit. So let me jump into that so I can cover it before we get any later. And if you have, like I mentioned, if you have comments of what you're getting. For me, this wine has a lot of like black cherry. Um, I, I call it like cassis, or there's a little bit of like a hint of anise even in there. And there's, um, I get it more on the pat. I, I've already tasted it, so I can jump ahead. But uh, even like a little bit of um, cacao or cocoa, there's like an essence there for me. And then on the palate, you get this great fruit component. And then there's even this like, for me, especially in 16, you see these layers. 16, it has a lot of fruit. Uh, historically what when you look back at that vintage but there's these nice layers of complexity to the wines and I you see that in this wine too and you see that layer of like I don't know if you want to call it like uh, savory herbs or you know tarragon or something in there there's something else in there that kind of you just want to go oh, I want a little bit more but also then there's the the fruit with the, the cocoa and just you know all that good stuff and it has a great long finish we were I was in an we were tasting upstairs, and we walked away, and we came back, and and Lee, was this winemaker, said, "Man, that's still I, I can still feel it. It's like you know, there's this long, long finish." So, um, and I'll mention Leaf. This is one of his favorite wines. He loves the, the Merlot. So, he was sorry he couldn't be here today with us. So, anyway, so yeah, uh, and we have people tasting the 2014, the 2016, so mm -hmm. some in the vertical, and then people tasting. Cool. Thirteen cab, nice. A thirteen proprietors cab. blend from the club shipment. Oh, fun proprietors blend, awesome. I will mention too, just since I mentioned the other vintages, is that there's only two cases, a little less than two cases left of the fourteen. So, if you want any, better reach out to, I don't know, to club to get some. And then also the fifteen has been, um, it's on hold. It's going to actually be going out to our collectors club in the fall. So if you want some of that, you'll need to wait for that shipment or sign up uh, contact club as well so yeah Lynn is tasting sage ooh sage that's a great descriptor yep sage mm -hmm. and then a shout out to everyone who cooked along with the recipe Brianne has cooked every recipe every week oh Brian, nice Brianne for making every recipe what was I would like to know what your favorite pairing was of all the of all the food pairings that you've made good on you I need to do that now. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta prepare. I gotta prepare for next time. I'm gonna show up with my, my cooked food. Um, Brian's tasting cherry, some plum. Yeah, plum cherry finish. plum. Yeah, perfect. And then, um, it just so happens to be in coincidence is that we're, as I've been mentioning each week, we're getting ready for bottling, and uh, I just thought I'd bring it down. We did, we did just rack. You can see this, it says the 12th. We just wrapped yesterday the 2018 version of this wine, so it will be in a wine club shipment in the future for you. So <laughs> I'm just, it's really good. It's, it's very consistent. If, you, if you're if you loving this wine, you'll love the 18 as well. Um, Brienne said her favorite pairing was the Chardonnay and the Parmesan crusted chicken. Ooh, okay. Good to know. I gotta try that then, Brienne, the, uh -huh. the um, chicken. A question from Sharon, what do the vineyards look like right now? Okay, question, what do the vineyards look like right now? Well, uh, it depends on the vineyard, but this um, vineyard, there is starting to go the growing season. So the shoots, I would say, depending on where you are in the valley, um, you have shoots maybe this long and longer. Um, they're, um, they're actually just starting to, it's kind of funny, we got a little bit of rain which we were talking about, one of the other vintages was cooler around bloom, so we had less um, set. Uh, we are having a little bit of rain right now, and we are starting to see a little bit of bloom. So we're not super worried, but um, if it continues to rain with as we're in bloom, it'll help um, nature's way of um, decreasing our harvest, which is okay. And um, But yeah, we're just, it, it's growing. It's just in a state of growing growth right now. So you'll see green shoots now and uh, starting to get a little bit of uh, bloom going, depending on the varietal. Yep. Uh, 
Um, Jimmy is asking, do you think that California Merlot is starting to earn back its proper place after Sidewin? Uh, I sure hope so. I mean, I think I think it's already there. Um, yeah, I think so. Laura asks, can you briefly characterize the changes you faced from Merlot's prior to 2010? So, um, older prior to or older vintages prior yeah. to 2010? Mm -hmm. Just, uh, sorry. Any change in characteristics in tasting vintages, um, you know, older, older than 2010? Yeah. To, to uh, if, you, if you go older, like 2010, uh, Generally, you'll start to see as, as the wines age um, that you get less fruit, that the, the fruit component starts to soften and you start to have increased spice and uh, barrel component um, uh, notes to the wine. So uh, less cherry, less uh, less fresh, fresh, maybe fresh fruit and going more to maybe stewed or jam kind of fruit. Yeah. And the tannins will often... Um, they can also soften a little bit. Like you'll think that the if something had a lot of tannin, you'll you'll just find that they're a little bit softer, perhaps. So um, yeah, um, yeah. And we have a, a hello from Tim and Sally McFadden and oh. Judy. Um, Hi, Tim and Ju Judy Sally. Judy and Sally joining Hi. from Nashville. Um, they said it's been great getting to know your personality and Aww. tasting the wine. Thanks for joining us every week. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the support. I hope everyone's doing well out there. We're getting, yeah, we're doing well here. Starting to anticipate, you know, when we get to open up and have you both, have you come join us again. So working out those logistics to make it safe for everyone. So I hope that when, when the time comes that you come visit us again here on the Hill, we'll be welcoming you with open arms. Well, from away, far away, <laughs> from six feet away. <laughs> Um, Anna is asking, with the rainfall, how do we combat mildew? Ah, well, we're getting into the. T <laughs> how do we how do we combat mildew? Uh, well, you can do um, you, some vineyard practices. You can, um, depending on the well, right now we would maybe add some sulfur, or if you um, other ways that we do it is uh, we would leaf a little bit. We go through and do leafing to open up the canopy, so to help uh, get get the, the air movement so you don't end up with some mildew. But um, yeah, we're, we definitely watch that really closely uh, to stay on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Jessica's asking, what is the most, do you have a, a memorable bottle of wine that you've tasted in your career? Do you have any that mm. stand out for any reason? Memorable bottle of wine. Um, well, I know we. I know a couple weeks ago we were talking about food pairings. Um, you know, I think it's one of those pivotal things. Like when you're, if you're working with chefs, and you're, you know, finding the perfect pairing to go with the food because you want to accentuate both of them and just they kind of marry together and make this great, like aha moment. You know, uh, I had a fam my family. My friend Veronica was uh, cooking for. We had a special dinner, and we we had brought. I think it was the two thousand. My dad would probably comment which vintage. I think it was the 2009 episode that we had, and we had she had some short ribs that were like falling off the bone that she had sous vide, and that for me was like a special moment. And I think um, it was a combination of a special person creating the food and being with my family, and just the pairing of both of them together were just like perfect. Uh, that would be one of my favorite memories. I don't know. I, I feel like, um, you know, I, I know a, a lot of people, I, I have other winemaker friends that have one aha moment, as we call it, like one bottle of wine that they, uh, that like changed it for them. And, and I, for me, I don't have that one bottle so much. For me, it's just about the experience of um, being with people and being with family and friends for me that is the memory of wine. And also growing up with, you know, I talk about my godfather was a vineyard manager, so you grow up hearing about the vines and the vineyards and harvest and what that entails for their family. And I don't know, for me, just that's what it is for me is the wine is the growing and just the people behind it. So 
I don't, I don't really feel like I have one specific moment, but that one stood out for me because I just had a conversation about it with my dad. So, uh, but that was just really great moment and a great food pairing. So, and I've mentioned before about the Chardonnay with the popcorn. So, <laughs> that's a practical going home to watch a movie or, <laughs> you know, um, we joke about that too. Your dad said he was happy that you were all able to enjoy that experience together. Yes, it was great. Um, so Tim is asking. When you're in the vineyard tasting grapes, what are you looking to taste? Are there any particular indicators, um, like in the raw grapes, mm -hmm. that would translate to when you pick it? Yep, yep. Okay, so Tim, Tim's asking about when we're uh, during harvest, walking the vineyard and tasting fruit, like how we uh, correlate the tasting the fruit, what we're looking for for when we're making those picking decisions. So, so when we get to the vineyard, when I get to the vineyard, I'm looking at um, you look at the health of the vineyard. You're looking at how do, how are the the, how's the canopy holding up? Um, you know, does it look stressed? If it's warm out, you know, how is how is the vineyard holding up? And then when you're walking the vineyard, you're looking at that as well. But then also uh, tasting when you're pulling the fruit off, tasting it. I often um, will uh, take a berry and you and, or two and you squeeze it in your hand in your, between your fingers and you see kind of the pulp, like how uh, turgid the pulp is. If it's starting to soften, what color the seeds are. Um, and all that good stuff, and then you often kind of uh, pinch the the skins, but more often you just then pop it in some other grapes. As you're popping the other ones in your mouth and you're looking at the others, you chew it and you spit out the skin as you've chomped on it to see what the color releases. Um, and you kind of just, for me, it's all about that and just tasting. You can kind of taste the flavor. I often describe, um, you know when you have, you <clears throat> unpeel a banana, and like how the, the that astringency you get from a banana, you get that sometimes with the grapes, you know, if they're not ready. So that's that's kind of for me, that's like one of my things that I'm looking at, like, is it ready or is it not? And so you'll you'll feel that sensation like when you take you put that fruit in there under the skin with your tongue, you'll like roll it around and you'll just you'll you just kind of you'll know, you know, and the flavors and Looking for ripe, you know, ripe flavors. You know, don't want too much banana because for me that's, you know, it's more of the greener kind of component. And that you'll often get that with Merlot. You'll get those descriptors. I mean, it's great that we're having tomato soup. Sometimes you'll get like uh, that unripe kind of tomatoey kind of smell that you'll get in Merlot. So we're we're looking, at least I'm looking to not have as much of that in the wine. So, uh, but just that's what I'm looking at for when I'm looking at Merlot or any other variety really. Uh, you're looking at kind of what the overall flavor is and really when you have to make decisions during harvest right depends on what mother nature is going to throw at you you have to weigh all of those things right all those balls all those what's coming down the pipe what's what are you anticipating is going to happen and if you're having a really hot vintage right you're trying to keep water on it so your the grapes don't dehydrate too much um, if it's you know cooler vintage um, if we get some rain, is it going to be okay? Are we going to have those mildew problems? But um, it's all just kind of, it's that balancing what's the best decision I can make for this wine, for this product to bring into the winery. So mm -hmm. I hope I answered. That's good, right? Yeah. Um, Jane says that this may be one of the best wines she's ever tasted. Aww. Balanced throughout, great flavors, pairing it with an aged cheddar and crackers. Ooh, I like that one. Thanks, Jane. Aged cheddar and crackers sounds delicious. And thank you for the compliment. Yeah, it's really fun. It's tasting great. It was a great choice to have for this for this week. It was fun to open up the bottle and taste it. It's got a lot going on, so it would be a good one to hold on to as well. Um, we left them open and came back today, and they're just like tasting better. So, mm -hmm. Did you already talk about aging for the 2016, like how long you might need? Oh, no, I didn't. Talk about aging for this one. I mean, I think this could easily go um, another 10 years easily, so at least five years you can hold on to it. Um, I think it's one of those wines that will surprise you, surprise and delight you, so it would be great to have a few bottles and pull it out on special occasions, but yeah, I think it's it's great. Um, and I, like the other Merlots, I didn't really talk about the vinification. <laughs> I just kind of jumped into tasting. If anybody out there wants to know, this, um, I am looking at my notes, this wine, we made less than 500 cases. Uh, this wine was on skins, so when we fermented it, it did end up being on skins for about 21 days on average. Uh, 
it was just a great, the skins were nice and ripe, kind of like what we were talking about when you're looking at the fruit. Uh, it just, it was really ripe and optimal when we picked it. And we just, it just would kept giving and giving when it was in the tank. And then we also did a small portion, about 10% of barrel fermentation that year with this wine. So we did, um, we popped the heads off of barrels and um, put the fruit directly in there and closed it up and just created a little mini tank kind of out, but it also has the oak. So it adds this, um, this complexity and this layers to the wine. So I think that's also coming through a little bit, just that, that hint of that wine and that, that vinification practice for this wine. Uh, yeah, and it was in oak about 20 months. I believe that's right. Yep, 20 months, 18 months, and it's 50% new oak. So a year and a half with a little bit more oak, and it just shows that, that the tannins of that uh, vineyard really hold nicely with a little bit more oak. So I don't find it overly oaky. I, I think it adds a nice spice layer in there and helps fill out the, the, mid, the palate. I think I'm getting another question. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, well, one one fun pairing is the the birthday crowd is pairing the wine with a birthday ice cream cake Ooh. made of Spumoni ice cream. Wow, that is that is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> a birthday cake with that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then let's see. Someone wants Lynn wants to know if you have a favorite Napa neighbor. Obviously. Love. Oh, Napa neighbor. Yeah. Oh. To taste, yeah. A Napa neighbor to go tasting. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, there's a lot of great, there's a lot of great Napa, Napa neighbors. There's so many to choose from. <laughs> so our sister winery, Napa neighbor, she's a little further down. She's a far neighbor. Chimney Rock Winery is a great place to go. Uh, in Rutherford, I would say I love the wines at, I love Honig. I love the wines there, and um, Round Pond are great, and uh, in Oakville, well, there's a lot, there's so much to choose from. <laughs> yeah. Paul saying he loves the Ian Tiago. Oh, a good suggestion. Thank you for the yeah Ian Tiago. I love that one too. A delicious Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. I love that one. Anything? Oh, anything else? Okay, well, um, I just want to give a real heartfelt thank you to all of you for joining me every Wednesday and uh, on every Wine Wednesday, uh, joining me uh, these past few weeks. It's been a real highlight of my week to join you and come into your room every week. And um, I really, truly look forward to the time when you can just come visit and we can taste in person. And um, please look out for, we are going to do another, uh, another series of this. We're going to do three three weeks, um, starting in June, I believe it's June 3rd, um, for three weeks in a row there. And um, look for that, and we will look forward to seeing you soon. So please take it easy, and um, be safe, stay healthy, and um, cheers. <laughs>